Okay. okay. Uh, so Paul and I were discussing in Slack some of the issues surrounding one of the issues that we have on the Omnibus project, which has to do specifically with updating the signing keys for the packages themselves. Um, we're referring to Omnibus issue 3897. However, this issue is um, convoluted through all of the discussions. It's actually straightforward when it, turn, when it comes to what is actually needed. Uh, quick summary is that we're talking about the package signing keys, not the repository signing keys. Our package signing key expires in August, which is why we're addressing it now, so we have a couple of months to go. What we have to figure out is how we want to actually update or extend the existing key that's already in place. Uh, we have to either create a key ring package and get that to install automatically as well, which we haven't yet figured out how to do. Um, or we need to extend the existing key and make sure that all of our customers actually get that existing key if they're using DebSign or any of the other keys that are in place. Um, I believe we're doing package signing for the RPMs as well, but we had previously been holding off because we didn't have that for Deb. Uh, so we're still in the same place, but now we have to figure out how to actually get forward as this key runs towards expiration. So Balo had asked me a question and when we were discussing about this one, just trying to get clarity about what was actually going on. But for the sake of those not in the Slack, can you explain what your concern was? Okay, so uh, essentially this is about the package signing key. As I said, no dropper signing keys. So uh, one thing I noticed is that the package cloud UI lets you add multiple keys for package signing. So uh, I haven't seen this in the doc set, but my understanding is if there are multiple keys, they will sign using all of them. Mm, okay, so this one's a funny one. So because because the package signing is actually separate from the repository signing, we can upload the keys to the repository so that to, to package cloud at the repository level so the user can download those package signing public keys from there. However, no part of package cloud seems to be involved with this in any way, shape, or form, which is kind of frustrating. Um, I yes, kind of because uh, because I, I, signing is right. omnibus job. Yes, it's our job to sign the package. The problem is that the UI gives you the sensation that maybe it should handle installing these public keys for you. However, it doesn't. <laughs> It just acts as a repository for users to get the public keys. Right. All it does is host them for you. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, hang. Um, it doesn't package these signing keys into a package. It doesn't run and install them when you run the install script. None of these things. Um, so, what I did was I actually, to verify this, I actually pulled the install script through curl and I have it up in a window. And it does check that you actually have GPG installed. It does yeah. make sure that you install the Debian archive key ring, yeah. which mind you, I'm kind of laughing at, it installs the Debian archive key ring, but does not understand installing a key ring of its own. Yeah. Um, so it makes sure that all of these things are in place and that key rings are active. And, and I think in the Debian form, the reason it's, it's installing the Debian archive key ring is that initializes your key stack while it's at it, as far as I know. Yes. Um, however, when it comes to the actual GPG key, it only downloads the repository signing GPG, uh, which is a separate issue to the one that we're actually looking at. Yeah. Mind you. So, I'll, re I'll say that like twice, is the issue got convoluted about which one we're signing. 
the task has never been convoluted, but the discussion has made it all over the place. So package cloud cares about repository signing, but not package signing, but lets you put keys in that it doesn't care about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, for those listening, yes, it was that confusing for us when we read it. Okay, so continuing with, with reading through what the code is actually doing, this does actually do, in, you know, it imports the GPG key, it downloads it, runs apt key add, but only for the one that you okay. find the repository, which is okay. standard. Um, we then turn around, have instructions on the omnibus here, Dax, GitLab, package signing. I don't remember the exact phrasing we have in. Ah, yes, thank you. So that would have saved me time. <laughs> Probably sent me the link so that I'm not trying to search through the docs to find it. Um, we actually use uh, DebSig Verify. Now, there's backing issues on why we did it in this way, but Debian never settled on a way to sign and verify packages content, only where they came from or not. Yeah. Um, so we chose to use um, the DebSig with Verify specifically so that we were signing the content of the package and not the sources of the package. So instead of doing changes and DSC for the description, we're actually signing actual content output so that our users know that what was produced in CI is what they actually get. There's no human hands, there's no involvement or anything like that. So the way we actually tell them to do that is we have them curl our public GPG key and then import that directly into GPG and then use the pattern for DebSig Verify to do that first for manual verification, I should say. We then so this is where that package cloud URL comes into play. They can pull it from package cloud. Right, that, that, exactly. So that's, that's why having package signing keys in the package clouds repository UI comes into play. It's because then it's hosted in this location for people to download. Um, so if I look at RPM based, it's a lot more straightforward. Um, with GPG signing on Debian, you can do it the manual way, which is here, or you can do it the verification with DebSig Verify. Yeah, RPM, RPM, you just need to download the, you just need to import the key and RPM itself has verification on. Debian have no such verification when it comes to package signing. Right. Okay, so I, I pulled up the Package Cloud documentation just now that actually refers to um, DebSig Verify. I'm sending you the link, Balu. Um, that okay. explains the difference in how things actually work. Um, this actually contains all the, the joyous fun to do definition of which key and what the hash is and which file and, and all this fun stuff that comes into play. And I'm, I'm not going to put it on the screen for everybody. We'll add it as a note. Um, so DebSig Verify uses XML to write policy files that tells it on which package to which you should check the signature. Yeah, it's, it's a complicated stack of, it basically automates GPG by hand for you, thanks to XML. Our documentation here is not great, by the way, on how to like actually get DebSync verified to work for GitLab packages. I just realized that. I'm like, it doesn't talk about the DebSync policy files or anything. Yeah, we just we just provide the manual way of verifying something. Like not hooking it up with anything, but 
virtually extracting the package and verifying if that contains the that sign of your right. Oh, actually, we did we did give some documentation on how to do deb six verify because we included it in a script in the omnibus itself that you can then curl and it'll configure it for you. Oh, I just needed to scroll down for those on the on the channel later. <laughs> this is why you read. Okay, so the fun part here is basically we had to figure out how to get everything to work here because the existing key is accurate. We need to basically extend that key and make sure everybody gets an update on on its validity, which I'm not 100% sure how to do, I'll be honest. Or we need to generate a new key, uh, possibly with a longer lifespan, and then sign the package with both keys and update these instructions about both keys. Yeah, so signing with both keys is going to be tricky because that involves touching the omnibus code base, not omnibus GitLab, but the actual omnibus tool that we use there, which does the GPG signing. And I'm almost sure they support only a single key. Yes, it, it, there, there's one. I do remember that. The, the, the signing automation itself supports a single key. It does not have a way to do multiple. That'd be great. Um, but it, we put it this way, it didn't at the time. Maybe they've fixed that since, because I remember doing the actual code and upstreaming it to get Deb Six yeah. to work. So there is that. Um, I'll bet you though that the the RPM handler does not have a clue. So we shall see about that one. I think honestly, our best option right now is extending the existing key. Extend, yeah, extending um, the existing key and. Announcing it loud and clear, this is the new public single print. You need to use this. Because right. the, the only way users are getting that key is by either by manually pulling the key. We are, it's not part of any automation yet. So it's, it's more like make sure your, we are heard. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm looking at um, the RPM requirements. And the RPM requirements still require manual intervention to turn on automatic intervention. So, because we don't ship keyring packages yeah. for either one. So, yeah, keyring packages are still a problem because we would have to add them and get that to work. Keyring packages to are... omnibus to support that to support signing multiple keys so that the keyring packages had any effect. So I think that kind of goes out the window for the first iteration. Yeah, I mean it, it works for Debian because of the specific process Debian follows. I it's going to be pretty complex for us to involve or include it in the omnibus workflow. Like Debian Debian doesn't actually Debian keys have long expiration days, but yes, yes, they create new keys every year and sign everything with all the keys. Right. And a big point that I want to make is that Debian doesn't sign their packages. No, they don't. It, it's only the changes for an NDSP, like the metadata only. So uh, even with a keyring package in that instance, it's actually, we're doing a keyring package for package cloud key and not our key, which is not what we need. So. Hmm. As much as I love Debian's approach, it doesn't fix our problem. No, it doesn't. Um, so now we just have to figure out like the right way to go forward. And I think, I'm thinking that the, there's just flat out too many steps to get a key ring package for signing package content signing working right now because we have four months, right? We've got four months to get a new key in play. We're not going to be able to get all this in play and upstreamed and included to get Omnibus to be able to support dual sign. And I'm not 100% that RPM supports dual sign. So there's that too. 
And even if we did actually include or create a package for the package signing keys, how do we insert that as a dependency on the various right yeah because again we need to get the package signing key not the repo signing key so i would love for someone in the community to be like magically oh we totally know how to do this let me help you i would love that i would love that um yeah, because uh yeah getting getting this Keying package inside is uh, almost the same as getting the updated key imported. Like it, it still needs users to do something. Right. Well, the only thing, if possible, this is a big fat if possible with using a keyring package, is that we would add the requirements so the package would then require having our keyring installed. Yes, but if it's not, it will just abort with a blight and error, like this dependency not found. So it's, it's similar to how we require OpenSSH. OpenSSH is a runtime dependency for our packages. Uh -huh. So if that's not present, app get install will simply fail saying OpenSSH is not found. So for OpenSSH, it's easier because users know how and where to get it. But when it comes to our key, it's, it will not be that straightforward. Like we can't actually add a custom message. Go and look here. They will have to figure it out. Well, time out a second. If they've added our repository, right, yes. because they've, they've run install, if we have that package in our repository, our repository will have a listing that includes that package. So then if uh, the omnibus depend on that package that's in the same repository as it, it should then be viable. There would be one yes. problem, one problem I that I know of, which is we would then have to have that package in both Omnibus repositories, at which point uh, can we? Can you? Because you'd have a name conflict, and it would be like, yeah. okay, it needs this. Which one do you want? Do you want GitLab signing keys or GitLab signing keys? Yeah, That's like get, getting it into both repos. I don't know if GitLab CE repo can contain only a package and GitLab CE only. I, I'm not sure if that's the case, but even then. Uh, two two repos having the same package is sure way to cause issues. Exactly, because we're back to a it would work if you only ever had one. Yeah. But if you installed, say, GitLab EE repository and CI Multi Runner repository. <laughs> yeah, true. Right? And then at the same time, if, well, let me see here. I, I'm thinking about something. We'd have to have two separate packages that have the same content, but named different. But it's and have dependencies differently. It, uh, <laughs> I, so, I'll just be honest and say I'm not a big fan. I, I'll be honest. I'm not a huge fan either. But like what other way is there to distribute a key ring package than to stick it into the package repositories unless we insist that you install two repositories at which point we have to customize package cloud hmm. right is there a boring solution as opposed to modifying an upstream product and i say product because not an upstream code base an upstream product yeah. how, how do we how do we distribute the um Public, the public key at the moment. The package signing public key is literally yeah. distributed by curling it. So we, we ask people to curl it currently. Yes. Yes. If you want uh, to turn on uh, package verification, follow one of these steps. If it's Debian, do this. You can use a, a, a DebSig script that we have in our repository to configure DebSig verify, or you could manually curl the thing and add it to your GPG and then check the output. 
if you're on RPM, then you follow these steps, which includes running RPM import to import from the URL that we provide that just happens to be hosted on Package Cloud. Yeah. So that's, that's you what you have to do. Sorry, go ahead, Balu. Yeah, either way users have to somehow import the key to their keyring manually. Right. And there's a sub problem that we, we've discussed earlier, which is the ability for Omnibus to sign with two keys. Right, there's no way to overlap. As far as we know, unless something has changed under us, which we have yet to check, that Omnibus is not designed in such a way to be able to sign a package with dual keys to have the overlap. Yeah, the, in, in the issue, the uh, uh, community member had suggested that there was a method for uh, extending mm -hmm. the expiry date. Yes, right. we can edit the key and extend and generate a new public signature. But uh, in, in that case, we need to say it out loud, this is our new public signature, import this if you want to continue verifying our package. Right, because somebody will still have to run, go get me the new pub sig. Even if we extend the key, it still comes down to, get me a new pub sig. If we use a new key or we use the same key and extend it, it's still the same problem. For the for the end user, yeah, the yeah, the only difference is that we we don't have to build in double signing, right? Into right, right, no, nope. into Omnibus. We're hundred percent on par with that. Yep. we're pretty so much going I, double signing is I, not in first iteration. Yeah, I think I think it probably would be a good thing to add going forward if we keep running into this. So I wonder. So there's already for a fresh install, we already have a manual step. I wonder if we could uh, if we could add so. It, if we could keep, if we're just keeping that for fresh installs, right, as the first iteration, we just need to swap out what that documentation is. But then the, the slightly nicer thing we could do is actually maybe uh, chip in the Omnibus package, like the, the new signing keys and have Omnibus check to see if you've installed them and install them for you type thing. Mm. Like have reconfigure do that. That's a, hmm. So touching, touching users gearing. That's okay from, from an SRE standpoint. Hell no. Right. A package that you install that live checks and alters the signatures that are accepted on the system. The well, only that's, one that that's the same as the package key though, right? No, it's not. Because you have a signed package from the distributor that you already trust that is providing you static content that it then sets. So you can verify that content and it's reproducible with a static point in time at all times. If the omnibus has a rake task that does this for you, that's, pro that's programmatically alterable, which would result in the potential for a security risk because some, somehow, some way, somebody could get on there and start futzing around. That why, why, dead, why couldn't you no just make it be able to edit that in the first place? Because it's, it's a root owned file. If somebody's root owned your system, then you're kind of owned anyways. So if that's the case, why couldn't we just make it basically instead of having the key ring package, just have the omnibus be the key ring, key ring package. Uh, As in stat on yeah, yeah. It only, it only helps you on upgrade basically. Yeah. Right. But that's that. Like already, the case is fresh installed needs to manually take the step. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about that. That we just, there's just literally not a way to fix that without having an actual keyring package that you install the keyring package and then install GitLab. There's no way for that. Yeah, so I wonder. I wonder if adding that that to Omnibus is kind of the first step towards a keyring package. It feels really jank. Like really jank. I guess so. the The alternative is just communication, right? Mm -hmm. Like adding the yeah. second one and then being real loud in the release posts about this is the new key coming up. It'll be going into effect. Actually, from what I have seen, that is the standard, right? When organizations create a new key, they just announce it. I'm not talking about Debian, which does it via a caring package, but other 
other distribution maintainers, you when they create a new key, they make sure they are heard. Like people actually listen to them and update their keys. Yeah, if if we actually wanted to do that, 12.0 is actually a really good one to do it in because we don't want people to just accidentally automatically update to 12.0 anyways. Right. Which right? if you're not using signing then I was just say if you're not using signing verification on your packages, it won't matter because you won't even be impacted by this. But for example, all of our SUSE and Rail customers will be like, oh my God. Yeah. Which is why we have to deal with this in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I I tell you what. Right now, in my opinion, it's still best to just extend our existing key. Um, take what it is, alter the expiration, and issue the new, um, the new signature publicly, and then update all the documentation in the event the fingerprint changes. This is our simplest step forward with communication and say, this is what it is, and as of 12.0, this will be the signing key, so you know. However, that does does have the caveat that you will have a manual step at the time of 12.0 upgrade. It's not going to be downtime of any kind, but it's going to be a manual step on every box that has this on it. And, yeah, which, which shop, please? And ask for some of my security professionals' opinions on doing something like having the omnibus do this for you because it feels weird. I so, can see thank you. What, please. No, uh, I, I, to be honest, I'm not thinking about Omnibus doing this for you right now because that I, I don't consider that a very clean solution. Because uh, we, we are not touching SSH saying it can cause issues. I, I sure don't want some package to touch my GPG query. So that's it. But uh, I am thinking about... But it's uh, from us. Don't you trust us, Balu? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, true, I, I get you. I get you. Because yeah. uh, it, it anyway involves a point of trust. Because the first manual action they did it involves trusting our website, where we said this is our key or this is the URL to our key. So, so trust is anyway included in this whole process. But uh, Jason, regarding uh, users needing to do another manual action, this up who already cared enough to do the manual action once, right? Right, and it just it's I'm not concerned about them. It's a our key is changing and you'll need to manually update it as of this version. So it's just, I, I want to be clear that we need to specify that in the communication. Yeah, so to be honest, I, I think that's fine. As, as long as we communicate it clear and loud, it, it, it feels like the easiest step forward. Where is the script? Sorry, I'm, I'm actually checking the script that we wrote some time ago to do the Deb Sigs uh, policy configuration. Have you figured out how long you want to make the, the new cert for? Um, honestly, it shouldn't be more than a year. Or should we, should we consider making uh, a basic every major version? Like ma major versions are supposed to be breaking stuff. So you use that and re refresh the key every major version. He's got a point. Yeah, I think we might want to put it at over a year then in that case, but like just just to ensure that we have until the next major release in, in case the major release shifts either direction. 
Yeah. Um, so, but like definitely not more than two years then at that point. Okay. I can agree to two years. Yeah. yeah we can do two years. years. Yeah. yeah. So we could do two years and then try to update it more frequently than that. I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I guess based on, based on how much, how, how much issues we have around people doing it for 12 by 0 will probably feed into how much more work we put into a key ring package afterwards. Yeah. Cause, Cause would, if we I get, would, if we get no feet, like after 12 by 0, if we get like no feedback and everyone's fine with the process, we may not put a lot of extra effort in for the next little while on it either. So. Right. Yeah. If it ain't broken, Well, it's more like it's it, it it sounds like even with the key ring package, like it's not necessarily a clear win, anyways, right? So, right, the key ring package has its own issues. Um, so with the key ring package, you would actually end up with, with two packages by the same name. So the EE omnibus, you know, GitLab EE would require the GitLab EE key ring. And then the CE would do the same thing, but the contents of the key rings themselves will actually be identical. But actually, I'm not sure what would happen if you had all of these installed and it asked for GitLab key ring and it goes, hey, you have three providers. Which one do you want? Well, we, we could always have named one CE and one EE and just have a condition when building the package what the, the runtime dependency was. Yeah, 100%. Like we have, we already have runtime dependencies for the EE packages on the some of the SE Linux tools, for example. I guess I guess it'd have to be a runtime optional dependency, though. Yeah, because you don't actually need it if you don't want it. Yeah. It, it, it is in getting similar folks. <laughs> yeah. Um, what what you missed briefly? What you missed earlier is that the the history of that issue is long, convoluted, and confused. What actually needs done? But in the end, it's the signing key needs extended. Or yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, or yeah, I've I've read through the issue. Yeah, at some point. At some point in the issue, people weren't clear which key, which which uh, which um, signing key needed to be updated, the repository or the packages. Yeah. Yeah, mind you, when the repository signing key needs to be updated, that will be yet another different process. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to if when when does that one expire? <laughs> uh, I know I just looked at it the other day, but I have to check. Let me let me because one one thing we should do is going forward we should like schedule a milestone or a ping for ourselves or something like that to to start checking it earlier. So that we have a little bit more flexibility. Yeah. Uh, the package repository expires twenty twenty. Great. Uh, next week. <laughs> One year and five days from today. Four days from today. Okay. So we're going to be doing this again in a year anyways. Yeah. So I think probably this time around in January is when it, we should try to get it back bugging us about it. Actually, I would say more like November. So that we have a plan so that in January it's done so that in April it doesn't explode in our face. I just have to figure out, I guess the best thing we can do is just this Slack remind me because we don't really have anything else 
for scheduling reminders for ourselves, do we? Yeah, black women is the only thing we have right now. <laughs> that, that, that itself sounds pretty Yeah, we're going to shut this out. Slack, remind me about this in a year and a week. Okay. Well, I guess you could use a, a, a email reminder. Instead of doing it on an epic, I guess. Oh. If you do this, we'll generate the notification mail. I'm actually oh. not sure. <laughs> because if, if it doesn't, then your days doesn't make much sense to me. It should be reminding me. So the due, yeah, the due date on the Epic, it does actually send out, GitLab sends out email reminders uh, as you get close, like the week before it's um, supposed to close. Um, but I don't know who it sends it to. So that's, that's why I gotta figure out if it's just the assignees or if it's, you would imagine it would just be the assignees. I'll, I'll have to take a look. But yeah, maybe, maybe an Epic with a due date. Yeah. Okay. okay, so to confirm our current short-term goal is to extend the key and communicate it. Right? Extend the key, communicate this, and at 12.0, update the documentation with new URLs. Because until then, it's not going to be accurate and it won't work. So, sure. well, we could put both in. Uh, yeah, we could. Or if you are anyway swapping it right away, we can just put the new new one. Putting putting both in is actually something we'll probably want to do anyways. Uh, the reason being is in case people want to install older versions, like yeah. still in the eleven online. So yeah, we we might as well just list both in the instructions, like basically right away as soon as you know them. Right. And That's then really keep cool. keep that going forward. Um, we'll have to figure out how to do that in terms of a dev sig policy file, but that's yeah. another issue. Okay. I'm trying to find where I have too many, too many tabs. Okay, so extend and communicate, extending two years. Effective 12.0 will require manual steps. Correct? Yep, for, for users that are using it. Correct. Then update documentation with both. And we've set a reminder. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll figure out a way to set a reminder, at least to the best of our ability. Well, the set, set the reminders for the uh, repository signing key. We should actually set two because we're going to set one two years out. Yeah, okay, let's set a second one. Right. So we need one set for the end of 2019 for the repository signing and one set for the end of 20. 2020. Yeah. All of 19 and all of 20. So with end, one for the end of 2020. Yeah. Okay. I think we have an a, a annoying path forward. Um, and then we can look at after 12.0, what's required to be doing proper key ring packages for all of the distributions and whether or not we can get Omnibus to be able to sign with more than one key at a time which will be entertaining. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for everybody's time. Yeah. Yeah.